On the 3rd of August 2010, two young men lost their lives tragically to carbon monoxide poisoning. This clip has been filmed to raise awareness of the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning and our mission at BROSPA is to save lives and reduce injuries. Well, Matthew and Aaron went down first on the Friday afternoon. Um, my husband dropped them at the train station. Aaron just texted me to say it was lovely weather, they had to open the doors and everything was fine. And just sent me the odd text, you know, to say, oh, what, can the fan heater not work and they hadn't done it right. And that was mainly it, you know, just back from the beach having a great time, the waiting on Neil coming down on Sunday, right. so the three of them could be together. So me and his dad dropped him down to the train station on Sunday night and uh, we told him to give us a ring and let us know that he'd arrived safe. Matthew and Aaron were going to meet him at, off the train, That's which right. was only in the next street, okay. you know, to where they were staying. And uh, 10 o'clock came and he hadn't phoned. So I phoned him and I said, Neil, you didn't ring me to tell me you'd arrived safe. And he just started to laugh and he says, Mom, I'm having such a good time, I forgot to ring you. Oh. So we drove down mm -hmm. and uh, when we got down there the whole place was locked up so we went along the beach to look for them in this beautiful beach with all these rocks and caves and I just mm -hmm. said to you didn't uh -huh. it Tina? Uh -huh. I said you know our Neil has had a ball. They've had a ball in and out to sea pushing each other. Just loved pushing that. each other in and out of the yeah. water and yeah. carrying on. Mm -hmm. Messing about. You know. We had phoned um, the police to say that we needed them to come and break into the okay. apartment because we couldn't find the boys and we didn't know there was something, we felt there was something wrong but we didn't know what and uh, when we ran back again the police were stuck in traffic so that's why we broke oh, in so we found sense. the boys. On the 3rd of August we were invited to attend the scene at Tunnelbreak Court by the police who were actually in charge of the scene at that time. We would conduct an investigation into any work activity which had been going on at the time or very closely to uh, the actual incident itself. So we would investigate under the terms of the Health and Safety and Work Order anybody who had been working on their plans or in the property. Carbon monoxide is produced by the incomplete combustion of any fossil fuel, whether it's oil, gas, wood, solid fuel. It will be produced because there's not enough air or there's too much fuel in the mixture. <coughs> the gas itself is colourless, is odourless. It's a very subtle poison in that we don't recognise it ourselves that we're being affected sometimes. We may have symptoms like dizziness, nausea, headaches and put them down to something else like common flu. It can cause unconsciousness and cause collapse but it also causes a bit of confusion as well. That we're sitting quite comfortably and uh, we don't really know what's happening to us. And this is why we advocate the installation of the audible carbon monoxide alarm. Because while we can't see it, we can't smell it. It may be in a room that we're not even thinking about, but the alarm will let us know. If we keep it maintained, we keep the batteries in it, and we make sure that the appliances are properly serviced, these things will all keep us safe. Aaron was just a clone of Neil. Mm -hmm. The two boys were so alike in every way. They were both kind, caring, um, they were always together, really they were good friends, even when they come up to our house we didn't mind what time they stayed to because we knew they were all good lads mm -hmm. and any one of the boys I would have been proud to have was my son. Um, the, found, the foundation is called Gives a Hug Foundation and um, it was actually an idea of Neil's mm -hmm. supervisor in work. And Neil was always hugging people, always telling people that he loved them and it was him that came up with the idea of, you know, um, raising awareness, raising money to buy the alarms so that we can install them into the homes of the elderly students and people who can't afford, you know, to buy the, the alarms themselves. So our messages are, first of all, that people should have their uh, appliances installed by properly competent persons to the current standards to make sure that all aspects of the installation are sound, that not only is the gas side, uh, but also coal, oil, solid fuel, all these types of appliances should be installed by competent people. But we also need to fit uh, carbon monoxide alarms. These are not a legal requirement at the moment in Northern Ireland, but they are what we recommend as best practice. And we recommend people go out and buy 
keep marked and approved carbon monoxide alarm for at least a five year life. That alarm should have a test button on it that people can test the circuits to make sure they're still working and test them at least every week on the same principle as a smoke alarm. The other thing to remember is that if we're going on holidays that we can either take a carbon monoxide alarm with us or we can have one fitted in our caravans or in our holiday homes and of course if people are renting out their holiday homes or renting out their caravans they would have a duty to install that themselves. Um, Matthew's doing all right, he's, isn't he? He's it? got the all clear he's, um, in the hospital. Right. And he has, uh, you know, he it took him a, a long time to get to to probably where he is now. Okay. You know, he was off work for a long time. Yeah, and, right, so. um, just, I don't think Matthew's the same. No. He's just, to me, he's just, he's there but he's not there, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Matthew's a quiet wee boy. Always he's the quietest wee boy you'll ever meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Neil, he, he knows Arn and Neil have been his best friends from uh, nursery school, so he's lost his he's two lost best his friends, friends, his whole, you know, his lifetime friends. Well, we have two bits of information. We have information for our students, specifically for students. We have a viral video, again, specifically for students. And we've also got advice for folks who don't get out as much. So they have, a phone, they have a phone number that they can ring for help and assistance. And then there's also uh, a website and, and a, a web address for students who are much more mm -hmm. into the internet. The, the whole idea is that we can get this message and this awareness out throughout Northern Ireland. You know, it's not just something that we want um, our whole community to know about. You know, whenever this happened mm -hmm. to the boys, as part from our own families being devastated. Our whole community was devastated. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, we see people walking around and they haven't forgotten about the boys. No. You know, and they're aware of themselves, you know, and it really does mean that Ireland yeah. is never going to be forgotten about. No.